Hello my friends, it's Lisa and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books that I read this year and I'm so excited to share them all with you, share the books I loved this year because these are my favorite videos to film. This is my third year filming a favorite books of the year video and I'm not kidding, I've been looking forward to filming this video all year. So very excited to be sharing these things with you and I'm just going to get right into it because I have a lot of books to talk about. I think I'm talking about 20 books in total, five honorable mentions and then 15 of my actual like favorite books of the year. So this might be a long one. I'd grab a snack, grab a drink, settle in, get cozy, and let's just talk about my favorite books of the year. So like I said, I do have five honorable mentions, and I'm going to try and go through these pretty quickly so we can just get into the actual, like, best books of the year. So the first one I want to mention is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai in the 1920s, and we're following Roma and Juliet who are on these opposing gangs, but there's this kind of monster that is going around and killing a bunch of people in Shanghai, so the two of them kind of team up to figure out what's happening, and they clearly have a history with one another, a romantic history, and it adds a lot of angst and drama to trying to figure out what's happening. And I just loved it. I loved the time period. I loved the setting. I loved a lot of the characters, the side characters. Benedict and Marshall are my faves. I love them so much. <laughs> and I just thought it was really good. This was a book I was really excited to read, so I'm really glad at the end of the day I did really enjoy it. The next honorable mention is Vicious by Victoria Schwab. This is following Victor and Eli, who in college are friends and are trying to do these experiments to figure out if people can become extraordinary or basically be people with these like supernatural powers. So we see flashbacks of them trying to figure that out and do those experiments, but we also see the present day and where those experiments and where those discoveries kind of have landed them and what their kind of friendship is at. And it's just so good. I read this book pretty quickly because it's just one you want to know what's going to happen. You kind of can't put it down. And I just found the characters to be so interesting because both Victor and Eli are definitely morally gray characters, but they're very much different from one another. So it's just a very interesting read. And I would have to reread the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy to confirm this, but this may be my favorite Victoria Schwab book that I've ever read. So there's that. Highly recommend. <laughs> the next honorable mention is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. This is the fourth installment in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, and this is following two of like the side characters from the original trilogy series. <laughs> so we're following Cassian and Nesta and their relationship. This book definitely had its problems. Like I definitely feel like Sarah J Maas just really wanted to continue writing about these characters but wasn't quite sure what to do with like the world and like the politics and that was clearly like a second thought for her but the actual romance in this book was just such a fun time. I know like these books are not like the best books that I've ever read by any means but it is a fun time and it made me feel a lot of emotion so I just had to shout it out. <laughs> the next book I want to mention is Dialy for Aunties by Jesse Q. Satanto. I have mentioned this book so many times on my channel I feel like it's showing up in this video is probably no surprise, but this is a book following this girl who goes on this date with this guy and somehow he ends up dead. So she brings his dead body to her aunties to help her kind of like solve what to do with this dead body. <laughs> so their solution is to put the body in a freezer, but this freezer accidentally gets shipped to the wedding that the aunties and our main character are going to be working the next day. So they're trying to work a wedding, dispose of a dead body, there's kind of a second chance romance happening, there's a lot of drama within the like wedding party. This book has so much going on. I still don't really know what genre it is, but to me I loved how chaotic it was. I loved all like the humor and just like everything that kind of worked together to make this book what it was. I know for some people all of these different elements probably won't work because the tone is so confusing because there's like a dead body and that all happening but then there's also like a romance and there's a lot of humor as well but I just thought that it all worked together really well. It was such a fun read. I was laughing so much reading this book and I loved it a lot so I had to mention it. And the final honorable mention is Gilded by Marissa Meyer. So this is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling and we're following this character Sorilda who on one, I think it's full moons that this happens, the Earl King and his wild hunt go and like collect people to join the wild hunt and if you get sucked into it you typically don't end up coming out of it alive and one night she ends up getting caught up in it and meets the Earl King 
and to kind of get away from him and to keep herself safe, she tells him this lie that she can spin straw into gold. So the next full moon, he comes back and he's like, hey, I'm bringing you with me. You're going to spin some straw into gold for me. So she goes to the castle with him and there's also this character named Guild who kind of comes to her rescue because obviously she was lying. She can't actually spin straw into gold. So he helps her and it's just kind of the story of her having this friendship, relationship with Guild, her trying to avoid being killed by the Earl King, and also just discovering a lot of the history and secrets with this town where the castle is and of the Earl King and all of that. And I really enjoyed this book. I know, again, Marissa Meyer, one of my favorite authors. I don't know. Can you see the Marissa Meyer dedicated shelf behind me? I do really love her books. So I really enjoyed this one. I love her retellings. I think she does them so well. I also just really loved all of the kind of mysterious elements to this book. I loved the setting. I loved how cozy it was, but also like how dark she took some certain things as well. Like there were definitely some twists and turns in here that I was not expecting. So this was a really fun time and I'm really excited for the sequel as well. I feel like we're going to get a lot of answers and I feel like the sequel could potentially make it to just like the normal favorites list next year and not an honorable mention just because I know that this is just the start of the story and it's going to get I feel like so much better in the sequel but I did really enjoy this love the retelling aspect love the setting loved the characters it was just a really fun time okay so those were the rapid fire honorable mentions now we can get into the actual favorites my 15 favorite books of the year these were all five stars for me and I am going to take a little bit longer discussing all of these Unlike the honorable mentions, I just wanted to go through those quick, but I will take a little bit more time with these ones. I also did try to order them, so at the end of the video, we're going to be talking about like my favorite, favorite books of the year, but honestly, I just love all of these books so much. I gave them all five stars, so the ranking is a little questionable, but I did try my best. <laughs> but let's just get into the actual list. So the first favorite book that I wanted to mention was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. So this is a kind of, I think, fictional memoir. I don't even know if that's really the term or what term I'm looking for. It's very much based off of Dean Addo's real life and real experiences, but it is a fictional story. And honestly, I feel like the Goodreads description of this book describes this book perfectly. It says, a boy comes to terms with his identity as a mixed race gay teen. Then at university, he finds his wings as a drag artist, the Black Flamingo. A bold story about the power of embracing your uniqueness. Sometimes we need to take charge to stand up wearing pink feathers to show ourselves to the world in bold colors. Color. So it's more so a story about our main character, I believe his name is Michael, finding himself and discovering things about his identity and not so much about a plot, it's more so just about him growing into who he is. So this book is Michael kind of from a young boy to up until he's in university discovering drag, kind of on his journey to figuring out his identity and what certain things mean to him. But this book is also written in verse, which I love. I definitely need to read more books written in verse because I feel like every time I read one, it just has such a big impact on me. I feel like just the way Dean Ada wrote certain things and the fact that it was in verse just impacted me a lot more than I think it would have been if it was just written in like a normal prose. I think Dean Ada is just a very talented writer. The way certain things were written just really impacted me and made me very emotional. And I also listened to the audiobook and the audiobook's actually narrated by the author, so it was really read to me the way it's intended to be read. It was just such a great, like, audiobook experience. If you're not a big audiobook listener, I totally understand that, but I think this would be, like, the perfect book to listen to on audio. It's just, it was so beautiful, such an important story. I feel like a lot of people could see themselves in this book, and I just really enjoyed it. I'm gonna laugh if I say at the end of each book that I enjoyed it, as if this isn't my favorite books of the year video. <laughs> So the next book that I want to mention is The Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. This is just the cutest graphic novel, more so again, not really plot, just vibes. <laughs> but tea dragons are these little cute dragons that brew like tea leaves off of their antlers or off their heads. And if you drink the tea that they brew, you can kind of see the memories of their owners. And it's just the cutest graphic novel, the friendship in this, all of the different characters, the tea dragons themselves. It's just the most like wholesome story. And the art as well is so, so adorable. I just love the kind of aesthetic of the art style, the kind of color palette and just everything about it is so stunning. And there's honestly not that much to say. It's just the most wholesome story because like I said, there's not much of a plot, but it's just really cute. Very, very wholesome. Definitely like brought a smile to my face. I actually think I like got a little like teary eyed just because of how 
cute this whole thing was. So if you're looking for some good serotonin, the Tea Dragon Society books, I would definitely recommend for that. The next book that I wanted to mention is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was one of the first romances that I've really ever read. I think before this, I had only read Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So I had such a great time reading this book. In this book, we're following Chloe Brown, who has a near-death experience. And because of that, she kind of has this realization of all the things that she wants to do to get a life. So she kind of makes like a bucket list of sorts. So one of the things on her list to get a life is to move out of her family's home and move into her own place. And when she does that, she meets this guy named Red, who she wants to have help her get like the things checked off on her list. And of course, a romance blooms between them. And I just thought it was so fun. I definitely think this was like a great like one of the first romances I've read. It was such a good like introduction to the genre. This book also I feel like made me want to read more from the romance genre. I feel like I still haven't read a ton but it made me start like paying attention more when I heard people mentioning it and seeking things out like through my library and just like paying more attention to the romance genre. I just really liked this. I thought it was a really fun time. I loved the relationship between Chloe and Red. I will say I feel like there were some like cringy moments like I definitely feel like the kind of like smutty parts some parts of them were a little a little uncomfortable <laughs> but I still really enjoyed it I thought it was so much fun and I've heard that people say like the other two books in this kind of brown sisters trilogy Danny Brown and Eve Brown are even better so I'm super excited to continue on with those books. I definitely want to read them, but I loved Chloe Brown. I thought it was a really fun time. The next book I want to mention is one that I actually just finished a few days ago, and it took me quite a long time to read, but it was worth it, and that is Ace by Angela Chen. This is a nonfiction all about asexuality, and I just thought it was so good. I definitely feel like I knew some things about asexuality, but I feel like this book taught me so much more. I feel like this is a great book to read if you're just kind of starting to learn about asexuality, whether it's something that you identify with or you just want to learn more about it. I feel like this is a great place to start. But I also think that if you know about asexuality, if you are ace yourself, I feel like it's also very interesting to read. It's not going to be something that's like just an introduction. I think it's great for anyone at any point. And I also feel like I just learned a lot about like society as a whole through this book. Obviously this book is through the lens and through the discussions of asexuality, but I just feel like I learned so much about society in the way romance and sex and all of these things have an influence on our lives and there's just so many things that I never even like thought about just like so many small things that I just didn't even think about that just are a part of life and I was just like yep that's just the way it is that this book really made me rethink and kind of challenge and just like switched my perspective a little bit on so I think this is one of those books I feel like everyone should read. This was just a great way to learn more about asexuality and just so many ways in which like relationships and romance and things like this play a role in society. I just learned a lot and I tabbed quite a bit. Don't know if you can see the tabs in this camera, but I just, I learned so much and I highly, highly recommend picking this up. All right, the next book I want to mention is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have read all of Elizabeth Acevedo's books now and I can officially say she's one of my favorite authors of all time because I've loved everything she has written. So this book we're following Imani, who's actually a teen mom, but she's also really passionate about cooking. And to her, she was kind of holding herself back because she's always trying to do what's best for her daughter, but she's really passionate about cooking. It's something she really wants to pursue after high school as a career. I think in this book, it's her kind of coming to discover her love for cooking and discover that she can do things for herself as well and pursue that career of cooking. And I just really loved it. I thought it was really good. I loved that, yes, our main character is a teen mom, but it's not a book about her like facing challenges or facing like issues because of that. Like it's just a part of her character as much as her loving cooking is. And I just really loved the conversation about that. There's also a part of this book where she's taking a cooking class in her high school and this class is kind of working towards raising money to do their class trip to Spain. And in Spain they'll kind of learn more about cooking and learn from people within different jobs that have to do with cooking and I loved that part as well. There was just so much that I loved about this book. I did tab a few moments because this book isn't written in verse which is like 
Elizabeth Acevedo's other two novels. Those are written in verse. This one is not, but I still found the writing to be super beautiful, super poetic. I just love the way Elizabeth Acevedo writes. I loved the characters, loved the kind of plot line of her being really passionate about cooking, them going to Spain. There was just a lot of great things in this book. I really loved it. And Elizabeth Acevedo definitely is one of my favorite authors of all time now. I just love all of her books. So yeah, I had to mention this. Love it. Stunning on the inside and the outside. I'm obsessed with this cover. Thank you. That is all. <laughs> So the next book I want to mention is Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This is a sort of prequel to Angie Thomas's very popular novel, The Hate You Give. We are following Maverick, who is Star's father from The Hate You Give. We are following him as a teenager and him discovering that he is a father. It says here he is the son of a former gang legend, so he's having to deal for the King Lords. Is that what it is? King Lords, yeah. And that is the only way he has kind of learned to get money to support his family, but after having a kid, he kind of starts to question if that's what he wants to continue to do. And I just really, really enjoyed it. I feel like Angie Thomas is one, just a very talented writer. And I also really liked Maverick in The Hate You Give. So I was really excited to get more of his story and see him as a bit younger. So yeah, overall, seeing Maverick's journey, seeing the difficult things that he experienced and having those things kind of influence him and seeing him kind of come to terms with different things, finding himself, figuring out what he wants to do for himself and his family was such an emotional but great journey to go on. It definitely had an impact on me and I just enjoyed seeing Maverick's story and getting a little bit more information about him. And I just think what Angie Thomas is writing about is so important for a lot of people to be reading about, whether it's me and I'm just learning about a very different perspective from what I live or people who could really relate to this and just the importance of that. I just, I really enjoyed it and I think it's great. The next book I have to talk about is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. This is a book following Yadriel who is trying to prove to his family that he's a real brujo. He is trans and he's kind of having some difficulty with his family accepting his gender. So to prove to them that he is a real brujo, he decides to perform the ritual that would kind of make him a real brujo and with performing that ritual he's trying to summon the ghost of his cousin that was murdered and instead of summoning the ghost of his cousin he ends up summoning the ghost of julian who is the kind of school's bad boy and the two of them kind of start working together to one figure out what happened to yadriel's cousin but also to figure out what happened with Julian and how to kind of help him move on as well. And I just loved this so much. This was a book that I was really excited to read after it had been released last year and had gotten so much hype and so much love. I was a little nervous going into it that I wasn't going to love it as much as everyone else, but there was no need to worry because I did love it. There's a mystery element to it. There's also potentially a romance element to it as well, which I really loved because I loved Yadriel and Julian as separate characters. I loved them both on their own. So when the romance element kind of came in between the two, I just really loved it. And just this whole like mysterious premise of it was really interesting to follow. And I also just think like the representation in this book is so important and so cool to see in a young adult novel. When I was reading this book, I was going back and forth with the audiobook as well. And at the end of the audiobook, the narrator and the author, Aidan Thomas, did this kind of interview. And the narrator was saying how cool it was to be able to see themselves in a novel. And they actually got like emotional talking about it. And I just think that that's so important and so cool to see and to know that younger readers are going to have that same experience and it's just really cool to see this representation on top of it being in a really good book as well like it's just perfect it was so good so fun and also just very emotional I got quite emotional reading this book got a bit teary-eyed I just really really enjoyed every aspect of this book the characters the romance the culture the mysterious element. There was just so many good things packed into this book that I just really, really loved reading about. So I'm really glad that, that this was a hyped book that I was hyping up and everyone else was hyping up. I was so excited to read it. It actually lived up to that hype for me. So the next book I want to mention is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This is a YA mystery thriller where we are following Pip for her senior project. She decides to do this kind of investigation on this like mystery that happened in 
this town that she grew up in like a few years ago. So the mystery is that this girl went missing and everyone assumed that it was the boyfriend who did it, especially when the boyfriend commits suicide and also like admits to murdering her. But Pip thinks that there's more to the story. She doesn't think that that is what happened. So this book is her going back and going through a lot of the files and things from that case, interviewing people who were friends with these people, and just going back and trying to figure out what really happened. And this was so good. I read it for a 24-hour readathon, but I think even if I was reading it just like on a normal day, I probably would have finished it in a day because it's one of those books you just need to know what is happening. You want to know all the answers. Obviously, there's not a ton I can say because it is a mystery. You want to know the reveals as you read them. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but there were just so many twists and turns and reveals and things that kind of happened throughout this book that I did not expect. This is one of those books where the ending just kept snowballing and things kept being revealed, and I saw like none of it coming. I was so surprised by every twist and turn and it was just so good. So good. <laughs> I just really enjoyed this. I think this is not even just out of the YA thriller and mysteries that I've read, just like out of every thriller and mystery that I've read. It's one of my favorites, if not my favorite. I just thought all of the twists and turns were done so well and I know that there's more books in the series, so I'm definitely gonna have to pick those up. All right, the next couple of books I'm gonna mention, I'm just gonna mention together because they're part of the same series. So I have Heartstopper Volumes 2 and Volume 3. I love Heartstopper. I think that they're just the cutest graphic novel series. You're following Nick and Charlie. Charlie is one of the only, like, few openly gay kids in his school, and that has caused some problems with him in the past with other people like being mean to him but he befriends Nick who is kind of this popular guy at school and he's concerned because he's pretty sure Nick is straight and he's starting to develop these feelings for him but with this friendship between the two of them Nick starts to question his own sexuality and it is just the cutest series their relationship is so so cute I loved seeing it expand in these other volumes. I will say that even though for the most part these are really wholesome and really cute, they do have some more difficult subjects that are brought up. So things such as like eating disorders and also some homophobic remarks from certain characters throughout the series. But I think for the most part they're really cute and I think Alice Oseman does a really good job of handling those certain subjects well. Not only does Alice Oseman handle those things well, I think they handle them in a way that's really accurate to how teenagers would handle those things and discuss those things. That's something that I really like about Alice Oseman and their books is that I feel like she really understands how teenagers act. Like, I know I'm not a teenager anymore, but when I was reading books as a teen, there would be some times where I feel like authors were trying to write the way they thought teens acted or the way that they thought they spoke, and it was like, yeah, we don't talk like this. But I feel like Alice Oseman actually like has a very good understanding of how teenagers talk and act, and I feel like not only just in general, but how they handle these certain more difficult situations, I feel like is how teenagers would actually handle these things. But yeah, I just really love these. I think they're so cute. I love the relationship. I also love like all the friendships in here as well, their friend group, because their friend group is really diverse. And I also love that we see more of them in these volumes. So yeah, Heartstopper volume two and volume three, I read this year absolutely adore. I think that they're just so, so cute and definitely made me really happy throughout the year when I picked these up. They're just so good. So I would highly recommend. I know that they're pretty popular on booktube and just the internet in general, but I think it's all for good reason. And if you read them now, you can prepare for the TV show that's going to be coming out, I think, next year. So you can kind of be trendy and be ahead of the game. And also they're just really good, so you should read them anyway. <laughs> okay, next we're completely switching gears with the next book I have to talk about, and that is The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I know I've been saying this is for a secret TBR, not gonna give my thoughts, um, but I liked it too much to not talk about it in this video, so here we are. <laughs> so this book is following this girl named Rin, who is a war orphan and is kind of growing up with these people that are just terrible to her. And so she starts studying 
for this exam that will hopefully get her into some academy, but specifically she wants to get into Synagard because you don't need to pay to get into the Synagard, but luckily for her, she does get in. So she travels to the Synagard, this military academy, and starts her training. And also like while she's there, after like a year or so, this war actually starts happening. So she's having to put what she has learned to the test in like an actual war. And this book was really, really intense, but really, really good. First of all, we just need to discuss the writing and RF Kuang like as a writer, because not only was the writing just in general very, very good, but the way that she kind of crafted the story was just so well done because I was a little concerned going into this. I thought because it was about war and politics and all of this stuff, I was like, am I going to be confused? Am I going to be bored? how what's gonna happen with this but I feel like she wrote it in such a way where it's not dense at all I was not confused really at all throughout this book I did take like a couple of notes like I have a little um post-it with some like significant characters and places but I wasn't confused it wasn't written in a way that was confusing or too dense or boring I feel like she just did a really good job of combining like all the political elements the strategizing within these battles and like within this war as well as like the fantastical elements. I think it all came together in such a really great way. So a book that I thought I maybe wouldn't be that into because I don't know how I feel about books that are really primarily about like war and strategy and all of that stuff. I did like find that I was keeping up with it. I wasn't confused and I was enjoying reading about it, especially because there was like a fantastical element. These characters that have these sort of abilities kind of play into the all the strategizing and the war and everything. And I found that all of those things combined was just really interesting. I also think a lot of the characters in this book are very, very interesting. Rin, our main character, is one of the most interesting characters I've probably read from the perspective of. She is definitely willing to do anything to one win this war but also to get power and it's very interesting being inside her brain seeing the way that she tries to solve problems and like justify certain things because sometimes I think she has good points but then sometimes like the more extreme things I'm like what are we doing here <laughs> but it's really interesting being in her perspective and being in her head and seeing her go through the process of thinking these things through and thinking she's doing the right thing or even if she maybe knows that she's not doing the right thing she's gonna do it anyway because she knows it's gonna get results it's just such an interesting perspective to be in and also just another character that I love Katai I think that's how you say his name I definitely need to look up um, pronunciations of the characters names but I think it's Katai I love him he is everything. He provided some of the like comic relief, especially like more so in the beginning of the book because the second half of this book gets very intense. So there's not a lot of, you know, comedy happening in the second half of this book, but he did provide a bit of lightness to a very, very heavy story. And I just love that. And I love him. And it was a great time. <laughs> but yeah, this book, like I was saying, is very, very heavy, very intense. Definitely like look into the trigger warnings and the content warnings. Like don't just go into this being like, Oh, I'll be fine because it's a lot, especially chapter 21 that people typically talk about and warn people about because it's really intense. It's no joke. It's not something to just be like, oh, I'll be fine and brush it off. Like seriously, look into it. It took me almost an hour to read chapter 21 and it's a chapter that's less than 20 pages. I just had to stop so many times because I was sick to my stomach. Like it's genuinely a really intense story and very heavy and very like there's just a lot of brutality in this book, so don't just take those warnings lightly. Definitely do your research, but it was really good. I mean, I don't want to say I enjoyed it because it was really sad and really intense, but it was so, so well done. RF Kuang is an incredible writer. This is her debut, which doesn't... Like, how is it that good? <laughs> it just, it's mind-blowing, her talent and the way she put everything together in the story. It's so good. I feel like I should have bumped this up on my rating. I feel like I should talk about this later, but it's too late now. Yeah, so good. Highly recommend. Excited to continue on with the series, even though I'm also terrified, but I'm sure it's going to be great. It's going to be fine. I'll be fine. <laughs> The next book I want to talk about is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, this chunky boy here. This is another book that I can't really give much of a description for because it's like the second book in a series that's like following another series. It's a whole thing, but this is one of the Shadowhunter novels. This is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy, which is sort of 
taking place after the Infernal Devices trilogy. We're following the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices trilogy. I'm saying trilogy too many times. <laughs> Can you tell I'm starting to lose it a little bit? I've been filming this video for almost two hours now. I apologize, the rest of the reviews for this video might be a little questionable, but this book I really, really loved. I just am simply trash for Shadowhunters anything. I just think the books are so much fun. There's definitely so many problems with them. I will be the first person to roast them. I will also be the first person in line to buy the next one, but I will also roast them. <laughs> like, there definitely were problems in this book, things I didn't love. Like, there is miscommunication to the max in this book. There's also some other questionable things that Cassandra Clare decided to do, but I just love the romance. I love the characters. I love the drama. I love the angst. It's just such a fun time. I did a whole like spoilery filled vlog for this book. Any vlogs that I have for any of these books, I'll link below. So if you want to know more of my like in-depth thoughts on this book, I'll have that link below as well. But I just really enjoyed it. I love these characters so much. This world just is very special to me, even though, like I said, like I do have some problems with certain books and things like that. I just love these characters. I love the world. And I'm very stressed about how this ended. I was just stressed the whole time reading this book. Like this book was a journey to go on. And I'm just so like concerned about these characters and just want the best for them. Specifically Matthew. I'm so concerned for that boy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I talk about Shadowhunters all the time. I feel like there's really nothing new I can add to this conversation. If you see the amount of tabs in this book, I loved it. It was so much fun and also caused me a lot of stress. And that's that. <laughs> the next couple of books I'm going to again mention together because they're a part of the same series and that is We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal. So this is a duology that I just fell in love with this year and I'm so happy I read it. I don't know if I would have ever picked this up if it wasn't for the fan series book club so shout out to them. I absolutely loved it. It was one of those books I started the audiobook for We Hunt the Flame and within like the first like couple of hours I was like yep this is gonna be a five star. I just had that feeling. So in We Hunt the Flame the first book in this duology we're following Zafira who is the hunter. She disguises herself as a man to go hunting for her town and for her people. She goes into like the Ars which is basically this like really scary and like cursed forest that like most people go in and don't come out of alive but she's able to go in and get things and provide for her people. We're also following Nazir who is the prince and he's kind of known as the prince of death because he goes around and basically just assassinates people for his father. He's a great guy. <laughs> I say that sarcastically but like I genuinely love him. Anyway, <laughs> again, I don't want to say too much, but Zavira ends up getting sucked into going on this quest to find this lost artifact that will kind of restore magic to the world and also stop the Rs, that forest that's like cursed. It's kind of going to eventually like take over everything and kill everyone. So she is trying to find this artifact to restore magic and prevent that from happening. And then we have Nazir who has been tasked with finding that artifact and also killing the hunter, which is Zafira. So their paths end up crossing and it's just, it's so good. <laughs> so there's just a lot of really great things in this book. There's a quest, there's uh, enemies to lovers, a found family trope, there's Altair who is a character who, if you haven't read this, you might be like, that's not a valid point, but just trust me, it's a valid point. He's everything. <laughs> and of course, We Free the Stars is the sequel and it's just following the events after this and um, it actually picks up like right after this book ends which I really liked because I liked that I didn't feel like I missed anything. I just really enjoyed it. I loved the characters. I think that's like the biggest thing with this duology. If you don't really like the characters or connect with the characters, I don't know how much of this series you'll enjoy. Like I feel like a lot of the plot and a lot of the feelings I had about this book and why I got so invested was because I really cared about the characters and I really fell in love with them. So yeah, I don't know if you would love these if you didn't connect with the characters, but I did. I love the characters so much because I definitely had like some problems with this series, but I kind of was just like overlooking it because I just had so much more fun with the characters and reading the story. So I was able to look past some of my issues. <laughs> so yeah, very, very lucky that I read this this year. I don't know if I would have ever picked this up again if it wasn't for the fantasy series book club. So I'm very happy that that kind of forced me to pick them up because I absolutely love this duology. I could see myself rereading it in the future and revisiting it. I just loved it so much and I love the characters and I just think I'll always forever love this duology. Okay, we have made it to my top three and I know I said this a couple of times throughout this video, but honestly, my top three, they're all tied. It is so hard to rank them 
One, because I just loved all three of them so much, but they're all so different. They're all different genres. They're all very different books. So it's like, I don't even know how I could begin to rank them. So basically my top three spots are basically all just number one. It's just a three-way tie. <laughs> I don't even know which one to talk about first. Like, I don't even know what to do here. <laughs> I'll start with the one that I feel like people are just like sitting here waiting for me to get to because I think we all know that I'm going to mention this book. And that is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. I have not shut up about this book since I have finished it. I loved it so much. Like I was saying with Get a Life Chloe Brown, it really opened my eyes, I feel like, more so to the romance genre and wanted me to get more into it. And this one definitely caught my eye and also was very much recommended to me from Casey. She basically demanded for me to put this on my wish list. And then she got it for me and now here we are <laughs> but this like i said is a romance and we're following catalina who is desperate to find a date for her sister's wedding in spain that is where her family's from she moved over to the states to kind of get away from her family and this kind of terrible romance that happened to her back there she wanted to kind of get away from that and when she's going back to spain for this wedding she doesn't want to show up without a date she doesn't want to get so many questions from her family and she also knows that her ex is going to be at the wedding and she thinks it would be embarrassing to show up without a date so aaron blackford her co-worker and the only man to ever exist ever offers to be her date to the wedding if she will also be his date to an event as well. The problem is, is that Catalina can't stand Aaron Blackford, so it does take a little bit of time for her to warm up the idea of them doing this, but eventually she agrees and it's just so good. <laughs> I loved that it was kind of enemies to lovers. Not really, that's kind of a stretch because I wouldn't say that they like are enemies and it's kind of just mostly on Catalina's part that she just can't stand him but there is that element there's a really good slow burn as well and i also love that they travel to spain there's the one bed trope what else is there there's just a lot of great things packed into this book fake dating hello obviously a big one and on top of all of those great things aaron blackford the love interest is literally everything to me <laughs> it was just such a fun romance to read i was like squealing and screaming and having like a like actual genuine reactions reading this book i literally was alone wasn't vlogging when I started this book. I just was like by my lonesome reading this book and having these very dramatic reactions. It just was so much fun. I was so invested in the romance. And I also think at just like the time I read this, I really needed something more fun and lighthearted. And it definitely brought that. And it was just the perfect thing to read at the perfect moment for me. And it also was perfect. So good. I know this is a book that got popular through TikTok, through Book Talk, and I know some people have very mixed opinions on Book Talk, but you gotta listen to them this one time. They made some points with this. <laughs> but yeah, I've talked about this so much on my channel already, so I'm gonna stop you here. But of course, I had to bring this up. I love this book. I tabbed it. I just had such a great time reading this book. It was the perfect book to read when I needed it, and I just had such a fun time. The romance is everything. There's just so many great tropes. I just loved it so much and if you like romance even a little bit you need to pick this up all right the next book i want to mention we're also going to be once again completely switching gears here i wanted to mention know my name by chanel miller this is a memoir and chanel miller is basically just telling her experience being emily doe in the brock turner case so i'm sure you probably know what the brock turner case is it was a very very like heavily talked about when it was happening but if you're not familiar with the case uh, Chanel Miller was at a party and was raped by Brock Turner and this memoir is her kind of discussing like kind of the lead up to that party the night of the party what happened and just like the fallout of everything her experience and also like the trial and this was just such an emotional read it was really really difficult to read at certain points because she's recounting this very like traumatic event or events and it's just a lot to read but it was so so good so this would have been a very like emotional and impactful read regardless but chanel miller is also an incredibly talented writer and that really added to how impactful this entire memoir was she actually wrote like a victim statement i think is the term and she like addressed brock turner during the trial and in that victim statement just that in itself was so powerful and that ended up going viral and she does discuss that in the book as well but the whole book it's she just has such a way 
with words. Like, she's just so incredibly talented. I also know that the audiobook is narrated by her, and I didn't listen to the audiobook, but I can only imagine how great the audiobook is because she's also an incredible speaker and I feel like it really comes through in her writing. But after finishing this book, I just went on YouTube and watched a bunch of interviews with her because I just, like the way that she speaks and the way that she writes is just so powerful. And I don't know, I, I don't even really know what to say about this book because it was just so good. It was really emotional reading about what she went through, not only that night, but like the lasting effects of all of that and also like what she experienced during the trial and just the way certain people treated her and the way she treated herself and just the whole thing was just such an emotional read but it is one that I think about all the time. I definitely need to own a physical copy and reread at some point and like highlight and underline and do all of that. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling. This is one of those situations where I feel like when I really love books, I sometimes have a hard time talking about it. Like it's really easy if like I have problems with books to like talk about those things, but there was no issues with this book. It was so good, so important, so impactful. I know I've said that so many times, but it's just the truth. It was so emotional to read and it's stuck with me since I read it like back towards the beginning of the year, I think. I think I read it back in April and I think about it all the time. I think this is not only just one of my favorite books of the year, one of my favorite books of all time. Again, I think if you can handle the content, I highly, highly suggest picking it up. It was so good. Okay, we have made it to the final book, the final favorite book of the year, and I'm gonna try and get through it before my camera battery dies. But the last book that I wanted to mention, one of my favorite books of the year, is Yoke by Mary H. K. Choi. So in this book, we're following Jane, who is just really struggling with various things in her life. She's really struggling with her mental health. She has an eating disorder that she's really having a hard time, like, coming to terms with and dealing with. She also has a boyfriend who is not the greatest guy. She's kind of struggling financially. She's struggling to kind of go to school and just struggling with friends as well. Like there's a lot of things that she's kind of having a hard time with. And her sister June lives in New York as well. I, they both live in New York. I don't know if I said that before, but uh, they kind of have this tough relationship. They don't really talk to each other anymore, even though they live really close to one another but Jane ends up being approached by her sister June and June tells her that she has cancer. So obviously that kind of flips everything upside down and just because her sister gets cancer doesn't mean that their relationship is necessarily fixed and everything's okay. It's kind of Jane trying to help her sister through everything while also struggling on her own while also them having this kind of strained relationship and I just really loved this book. Obviously with a premise like that it's quite sad, it's very emotional and just kind of of heavier but I really enjoyed it. I was nervous to read it because I had seen a lot of mixed reviews on some of Mary H.K. Choi's previous books that for a very long time I was just kind of avoiding reading them because of those reviews but I'm really glad that I ignored the negative reviews because I read this and absolutely loved it. I love Mary H.K. Choi's writing style. I think one she's just an incredible writer in general but the way that she wrote these characters was so interesting because she made them seem so real and so human. They're such imperfect characters. They say and do a lot of things that are not great. They think some very selfish and not great things. And there's not one character in this book that isn't like that. They're all like imperfect and just very real. And that's a big reason why I loved it. I loved reading about characters that felt so human. And I know that I'm sure some people found them very annoying because like I found them to do things I would be irritated by because I'm like that's not nice or that's not great but it just also felt so real that I couldn't really fault them for that. And I also just think there were certain elements of this book that I personally could relate to. Not everything but there definitely were some certain things that kind of hit a bit closer to home for me. And also just the fact that it's about these two sisters was really interesting to read about as I have an older sister and the age gap between Jane and June is this basically the same as me and my sister and also we're reading it from Jane's perspective who is the younger sister and I'm the younger sister and I feel like if you're a younger sibling there's just a certain vibe like there are certain vibes for the older sibling and for the younger sibling and I could see <laughs> the annoying things that younger siblings do in Jane. I was like oh yep. I see that. <laughs> and even though me and my sister's relationship is very different from Jane and June's, like me and my sister, we get along, we're really close, and that's not how it is between us, it was still 
interesting to see a relationship that did have similarities, I think just because of the dynamic of a younger and older sister. And it just had me thinking a lot about my own sister and everything. And it just, I don't know, it was an emotional reading experience. I, for like a week after reading Yoke, could not think about the book without crying. <laughs> it wasn't like it was like a deeply upsetting ending or anything. It was just a very emotional read for me, I think because there were aspects that I could relate to. And even the ones that I couldn't, they just seemed very realistic because of the way Mary H.K. Choi wrote the characters and wrote this story. It was just so good. I again feel like I'm not describing myself well except when I really love something, like when I really love a book, I feel like I don't know how to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, I still get quite emotional actually thinking about it even though I read it back in July. <laughs> I just really loved it. I really loved Mary H.K. Choi's writing. The characters, even though they were so flawed and they did annoy me and they did do things I didn't like, it just felt so real. I don't know. It just made such a big impact on me I think this year and there was a lot of things that I could relate to and things that I couldn't but I still really appreciated. So yeah, it was just really great and I'm really really glad that I decided to pick it up this year. All right, that is it. We have finally made it to the end. Those were all of my favorite books from the year and it only took me, oh my god, it took me like three hours to film this video. <laughs> Whoops, sorry about how long this video probably is but I hope you enjoyed. But I would love to know in the comments what your favorite books of the year were. If any of these books featured on your favorite books of the year list, I would love to know. I would love to yell about any of these books down below in the comments. And I definitely want to hear some of your favorite books as well because I love recommendations and I also love hearing people rave about books that they love. This is like my favorite time of year because of people posting their favorite books of the year list. I just love it so much. So definitely let me know down below in the comments. But that is gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining me this year, reading these books. I've had such a great reading year. I've had such a great year with you all posting about these books, talking about them, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.